David's back now with our continuing coverage of this winter weather in one especially dangerous part of it, right? That's right, AJ. We're talking black ice, how to watch for it, mm. how to avoid it, and what you can do in the event that you are in it. Now, it's because of winter storms like we're seeing tonight that skidding on ice is almost inevitable. And you may not even notice black ice until you actually encounter it. For answers about black ice and how to stay safe on the roadways, I dug just a bit deeper to give you this story. With winter upon us, the risk of accidents increases on the roadways. There are numerous weather hazards during winter, which don't only reduce visibilities, but can also cause slick roadways. That danger is black ice. Black ice is ice that forms on roadways that is nearly translucent. Black ice can form on either nights with precipitation or nights when there are high humidity and temperatures below freezing. Snow melt refreezes on the roadway as the temperature drops, which causes black ice to form. According to the Michigan Office of Highway Safety Planning, over 25,000 accidents occurred in Michigan during winter weather in 2010. 53 of those were fatal. The majority of crashes that occur in the winter aren't quite as severe as they are during dry, uh, dry times because the speeds are typically down a little bit. While air only affects the top of roadways, air can flow across all surfaces of a bridge. This allows the bridge to drop in temperature quicker, making it easier and faster for ice to form. Skidding on ice can be a scary situation. Sergeant Rogers of the Michigan State Police Precision Driving Unit gave me some techniques to help control your vehicle if you are out of control. The first thing you need to do is not panic. The second thing is stay off the brake. When the car is sliding sideways, do we have traction with the roadway? You don't. The next thing is get your eyes up and way down the road at one point. And what that allows you to do, it allows your body to sense exactly what way the car is moving. And if I am looking down the road, my body is naturally going to try to drive to that location. It is crucial to watch the road and other drivers at all times to minimize the chance for an accident. Until we make eye contact and I see them and they see me, I'm kind of on guard a little bit. Are they eating a sandwich? Are they talking on their cell phone? That throws a red flag because now I know that driver's distracted. So I'm definitely going to be paying a little closer attention to that person. According to a new federal mandate, all 2012 vehicles must be equipped with stability control. That basically does skid control for you. If the car starts to go out of control, that system basically takes over. It will also add brake where necessary to straighten that car back out and get you back under control. Sergeant Rogers gave me the opportunity behind the wheel to test my driving abilities. My first attempts at recovering from a skid were a disaster. This was because I didn't focus on the road in front of me. The eyes in the pole, eyes in the pole. After nearly a dozen times, I finally got the hang of recovering from a skid. That was good. By learning correct techniques and paying attention to surroundings, the chance of accidents will continue to drop. Wow. And just in case you're wondering, you can actually check out if your car has mm. the electronic stability control by visiting www.iihs.org. Interesting stuff. All right, David. Now, it took you a couple of times to recover from that skid. Are, yes. Do you have any pointers for the rest of us now? Well, the best thing to do, and this is what Sergeant Rogers has stated just a little bit ago, make sure that you focus on one point down the road oh. uh, instead of looking at, like, the hood of your vehicle mm -hmm. or the ditch or maybe even the uh, sign on the highway that may be only 10 feet in front of you because if you do, your chances of getting an accident start to go up. All right. Good stuff. Thanks a lot, David.